Hi, I'm Rob from Skitsu Genius. Today I'm going to show you how to initially set up a super controller and then how to troubleshoot one. So the first step when you receive your super controller is take it out of the bag and apply power to it. You don't want to spend a few hours installing the thing only to find out that something's happened to it in shipping or whatever. So the very, very first thing you want to do is plug it in. So we always ship every super controller with a cigarette lighter. I don't have a, a machine to plug it into here, so I'm just going to use my power supply. So I've applied, applied power to it here. You'll see that there actually no lights come on on this model, and that's because uh, just the way the software was done on it. So what you want to do is get your, uh, your joysticks out. And this is really important because we want to test all of this and just make sure that everything's good because we don't want to go and install everything and have a problem. So also this helps to prove to you that everything's good and working before you install it. So just in case you, you nick a wire or, or smash a connector or something, you'll know that, okay, this is something that happened during the install. So all we want to do is just plug them both in. Okay. And then what I'm just going to roll through the controls here. Okay, and I see them both lighting up. So here I'll show you now. So here's my power light. It's coming on at the same time to tell me that there's power into the main chassis and here's my control lights these are the momentaries if i hold the button for six seconds now it comes on these are my latching ones so same thing goes here i roll through here okay and then i hold i push down in the middle here for six seconds so this is important to know this function because this is for latching features so things like um if we want to turn on and off lasers on our, on our graders or on our boom or we want to turn the mower connection on, it makes us wait for six seconds. And that's so you don't accidentally just bump it and turn the mower on when you're driving or you've got somebody looking at it or some bad bystanders. This gives you time to think about, okay, I'm actively wanting to turn the, that part of the attachment on. So I'm going to hold the button down for six seconds. Now, if I have, have a, something happen, emergency, I can just quickly click it and it turns off. So, I want to turn the things off they do go off very easily so that's that part of it so the next function would be to install this and what you can do here is you can use a cigarette lighter or the and this is a temporary controller but if we're using the permanent one we actually have another Deutsch here you can chop this portion of it off and wire it in now the wiring sequence in this is really important so these are the if you once you open the sheath up in here you'll see that there's a black wire and a white wire the black wire is the ground, the white wire is the 12 volts. So make sure that you've set that up properly because we have a little bit of input protection on these, but if you give it full on battery power and it's reverse current, you will blow these and that is not covered under warranty. And we do know how to, how to test for that. So make sure, once again, use the black wire for ground, white wire for 12 volts. Anyway. Okay, so now once I've gone and verified that everything's working on this, I'm going to go through the steps of doing the install. Go to the other videos in our, uh, in our series and just look for the install that's specific to your machine and you get all the details of how to actually run the cabling and uh, where to put the box. That's always an a interesting question that people have is where to put this box. Um, and then as well as just running the joysticks up, installing the, uh, the RAM mounts into the system and then getting up and going. But at least now we know everything's working and we're good to go so we'll go Head now and put it in the machine. Controller. So what I've done is I've just got one of our super controllers here on the table, so it's a lot easier just to show you what uh, what everything is and how everything works. So the first thing I'm going to do is we'll just talk about how this works and what the theory of it is. So basically, this takes a 12 volt supply off your machine, runs it through this black box, and this black box has a microcontroller in here and software. The software is sending out codes out these little gray cables here out to these joysticks and what it's doing is it's checking constantly, checking, checking, checking to see if there's any kind of action here. If there's action, what it does is it triggers a solid state, um, let's call it a relay, but it's not, but a, a solid state relay in here uh, that puts 12 volts out onto these pins. So we take your power, run it through our box, apply some software to it, 
use the controls here, and then the power comes out onto these pins. So now, if we have a problem, we always want to start at the beginning of the chain. So what we want to do is we want to look at the very beginning and check our power. That's the most common issue that we ever have. Because if you accidentally have, you hit the corner of this with something, or you smack it, or whatever, somehow something foreign material even gets in here and causes a short, uh, you'll blow your fuse. So you always want to go back and start at the very beginning in your machine, check your fuse. If you've checked your fuse and you're good, then what I would do is I would come out and look at this black box. Now a lot of times you've installed this black box underneath the seat, so that's the unnecessary evil here is you're going to have to open up your ROPS, flip it up, and then get your key on and then run these, uh, one, run these joysticks and see if you see these LEDs lighting up. If you do not see the LEDs lighting up, you want to go back to the power source again and verify that we've got power coming into the box. How we verify that is we take a meter or a test light, we go across the connections going into the, the cable of the, of the super controller. If we verify that there's power all the way through here, uh, we just want to verify with the box that everything is in good condition. Because sometimes these get installed too close to the motor and they melt or they, the magnets come loose and they pop down and they end up in, in contact with something and they get damaged. If that is still dead, then you're going to need to contact us and we'll probably have to work with you and get, it, get your replacement box. So that's the, that, that's the, uh, the power connection portion of this. And now we'll move on to troubleshooting the joysticks. Okay, so let's move on to the joysticks. The most common problem with these is a mechanical failure, and that's caused by people getting in and out of the machines, and usually it's the joystick gets caught in people's pockets and it gets torn apart. Uh, we've made these really simple to rebuild. Uh, you literally can take the five screws off on the back here. You can replace every single part of this, including the buttons, the little controller board, the cables, the plastic around it. We sell all of those parts on our website just to make it really simple and inexpensive for people. If you are that type of person or you've got operators that work for you that are really hard on this stuff, uh, I suggest you probably get a few of the control boards and maybe a little bit of, a couple of the, the little plastic covers as well, just to have it around so that you don't get taken down if there's, uh, if there's a problem and somebody breaks one in the middle of a job. But these are really simple to troubleshoot. We use the controller. All we do is we make sure we've got a power applied. And the first thing we want to do, if we're if you're seeing an attachment, say, uh, either it doesn't work or you get in, you put your apply your hydraulics and all of a sudden it slams to one side, say, like say it's a grater and, and the blade slides to one side or drops down or something and you can't get it to come back up again, uh, probably something's happened to the joystick. And how you verify that is you go and you look at the box. If you open up the, your cab and you look inside and you see the box and you see that where you've got one of the LEDs just stuck on and no matter what you do, it's stuck on, then you've got a problem here. The best way to troubleshoot that is to, you'll, you'll take off the shrink tubing that you've got over top of here and just, now that you've taken off the shrink tubing, then all you do is you're gonna unplug your left controller and plug it into the right controller spot unplug the right controller and plug it in the left controller spot. Now, if the problem moves to the other side, then you know that it's, the, it's one of the uh, joystick controllers. So you can take it apart if there's no damage to the plastic, and you can literally just take out the PC board. Now, if you need to troubleshoot these though, and you're not quite sure, you've got maybe a dead spot, and you're not quite sure which one's working, so here, I'll plug one in here that's like this. This is a bad one. You see as I rotate it, nothing happens. Okay, but you're not able to see this. What I recommend doing is, because you've got your cab up in the location, is I usually, I'll just take my phone and I'll put it on video. I'll have it facing me like so. And then all I have to do is put it underneath, put it on record, go up, pop up. And it's usually, it'll be like facing in this direction like so. I'll do my tests on here. And then I'll just pop back look at my phone and I can see how it's done. I troubleshoot a lot of things that way where I can't quite see things so I'll, I'll tuck my phone into different locations, get it videoing, and then I'll, I'll go and do my troubleshooting. So now we've established in this case that uh, this joystick's bad. Uh, so what we want to do is I'm going to show you how to take this apart now and actually change out a PC board.
Okay, so uh, just to make things a little easier, I've already undone most of the screws here. But this is how to disassemble the joystick. And just don't forget, there's a there's one down in this little ball here. Take out. Okay. So there's a total of five screws. Okay, you just carefully lift the back off. Okay, and you'll see the wire coiled up here in the hole the unit will pop out now it, the wire is held in with um, some hot glue okay so you do want to replace that and that just helps to hold it in place here but here's the other side of it now starting at the beginning there's the button these just pop on and off so if you need to you can change them out and that's the most common thing is these buttons get broken but that's how easy they are to take on and off next thing is the PC board that's on a uh, on a connector. You can take that out, pop another one in, okay. And then the cable. If the cables get damaged. We also have those, so you can change absolutely every single part of this in just a couple of minutes and get and be up and going in no time. So we have all of these failed joysticks that we've been testing, and it turns out it's not the joystick. It's the cable. Nothing works on these. Change the cable out. Everything works. So the quickest way to troubleshoot these is it's going to be one or the other. If you've already troubleshot it and, and got it to the point where you know that it has something to do with the joystick, all you want to do is just pop the pop the controller and the cable out. I've got nothing working here. So the very first thing, if you're buying parts from us, just buy one of these little controllers. They only cost a few dollars. Plug it in. Okay, it's still not working. So that tells me it's the cable. So I just pop the cable out, put another one in. Install the board. There I go. So it's just that simple. These are really not very complicated parts, very inexpensive parts. So it's always good just to have a few pieces even on hand here. Uh, the cable. You might want to go through and just do a visual inspection before you even start taking the thing apart and see if it's been nicked or again if it got too close to an exhaust system or something that got melted. Um, in this case we just got a bad bad connections in here uh, in the other cable so um, we changed the cable out cost only a few dollars and we're up and running. So that's pretty much it to troubleshooting the joysticks. Uh, again, every single part that you see here is available on our website, so you don't have to go and buy a whole new joystick if something's not working. You can buy the individual piece. Okay, so now we've troubleshot all the way through. We've got our joysticks working. But say we're still, we're getting an indicator here, but we're not getting anything on our cable. Uh, the best way to troubleshoot that, or we're not getting on our attachment, sorry. The, the best thing we want to do here is we just want to put a meter or a test light on pin B, which is our ground, that's B is in Bravo. And then we just want to go through and test each one of the functions here and make sure that we get power. Now you only get momentary power, so you're going to actually have to be on your joysticks and operating at the same time as you're touching the pins and going through and testing everything. If that doesn't test out, that you're getting a, a light indicator here, but you're getting nothing at these pins, then you need to go back and inspect your cable and look and see if there's something that's happened here. I'll give you a hint. The most common thing that people make, or the most common mistake that people make, is they leave the attachment connected to the, to the super controller and they drive away. And so what ends up happening is they pull this, and even though the pins still look like they're connected here, sometimes they'll pull the wire out of the back of the, of the, of the pin. So you're gonna have to open up this connector. There's two slotted screws here. You unscrew this and then you unscrew this collar and pull this back. I recommend spraying this cable with some uh, silicone before you get started 
so you can slide it back and get it out of the way and then get in there with a really bright inspection light and look at all of the connections inside the back of the pins and make sure that everything's still connected. If that's all still good, then go back through the cable, look at the box, look for any type of indication of a problem. Unfortunately, if you did damage the cable, we don't have any way of, of replacing this. You will have to replace the box or you can go in and mend the cable yourself. Meaning you would go in, open up the sheathing, go in and, and patch the cable where you need to patch it, uh, tape it all up when you're done, try and get some shrink wrap, some shrink tubing over top of it if you can, and then, uh, and then you should be good to go. If you still have a problem and you're not getting something through the box here, then there may be a deeper problem. There may be a blown driver, something that got connected wrong, and the uh, output driver of the, of the box is blown. And in that case, we will have to replace the box and the, and the cable. Whoa! <laughs>